most uh, academically interested. So I'm not, it doesn't really accord with my own experience. The, 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 the candidates are picked by the Oxford and Cambridge colleges and the academics there are looking for the most promising mm -hmm. Uh, young people to, to work with and alongside for the three or four years of their degree and you know that they do try and pick the very best so so my experience is actually different to, 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 to his obviously should it be the case that and the minimum requirement to get in let's say is three A's at A level should it be the case that three A's at A level is seen as a greater achievement by a pupil in a state school than one in a private school well it would depend Hello, on the state school and we shouldn't assume that private schools are necessarily better than state schools and there are many superb state schools but in general if if we could compare the, the, the most academic independent schools with the lesser advantage state schools then, then yes of course and i've always argued uh, that, it, that, that that this should be a measure of potential potato, man. Uh, as well as a measure of actual achievement you know, and independent schools are extremely good. The, the Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Please uh, candidates share the podcast. A level grades and top grades at the International Baccalaureate. And join in um, with the conversation. I don't join in myself with see anything wrong. The conversation. Therefore, with universities making a judgment, and I now run a university, University of Buckingham, mm -hmm. making a judgment about potential uh, rather than just uh, the actual. Um, achievement at the age of 18. It, it seems to me to be quite sensible. I mean, you know, it, it's what, uh, it, it, it's what uh, uh, scouts for, for teams like uh, Newcastle or, or, or Tottenham Hotspurs will be doing. They'll be looking not just at you know, what, 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 what a young player... One way they do, my girl. <laughs> I wonder what you make of what Dr. Wallersteiner has said here. He, he also uh, likened criticism of private schools and the elite to anti-Semitic abuse. He said please the give, rise of feel, populists and please feel free to as giving us the micro industry your, bashing private schools. Uh, he said some of the criticisms echo the conspiratorial your, your views. The protocols of the elders of Zion. It was relatively easy for Hitler and his henchmen to suggest that the Jewish minority was overrepresented in key professions in medicine, law, teaching, and the creative industries. Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty odd, isn't it, to start comparing. And it is true, is it not, that lots of industries like the law and medicine do have a higher proportion of people who went to private school. It's not a conspiracy. <laughs> yes, indeed, as is very well known, uh, the country has disproportionate numbers uh, of uh, those who've been at independent schools who are at the top of uh, uh, the media and, and industry and, and the armed services and, and, and the church and, and banks, etc., and, and politics. So, so, I mean, that's my own experience. Mm. And these schools are very good indeed, often, uh, bearing in mind the best state schools are, I experience, as good as or even better uh, than, than private schools. Um, and they're getting better all the time, state schools, but it's certainly true that if you look at the past, uh, and, and that today, independent schools are disproportionately successful uh, with their students. Fees are going up. The chances of getting into a top university, according to this headmaster at least, seems to be going down. What's the point of paying for private school? Well, that's a question that, that many people ask. And if indeed the state sector and uh, governments have been trying for, uh, for, for, for many years now to improve uh, the state sector, uh, John Major did, and Tony Blair in particular, and Prime Minister since, to improve the state sector more and more, that, that then there is less and less point uh, in, um, in, in parents uh, choosing. Uh, that certainly is uh, a concern for mm. many independent schools. I think if you look, however, at the breadth of uh, experience that young people can get in the smaller class sizes, there are benefits, the enrichment outside uh, the classroom, and it is a shame uh, that, that, that some, not all in but state schools, uh, do focus very much on teaching and not so much on sport, though some do, and, and on culture and wider enrichment, and that's just a fact. That, that is because independent schools are paying rather than, say, £6,500 a year per 
head uh, uh, that they're, they're paying two, three, four times that much. So you right. do get all for your money. So Anthony, I'm always grateful to you. Thank you. So Anthony Selden, political historian, vice chancellor of the University of Buckingham, former head of Wellington College. 20 to 12 is the time. Let's come back to your calls on Danny Baker. Barbara's in Market Harbour. Hi, Barbara. Hi, morning, John. Morning. Um, I think Danny Baker is not only a racist, um, it's kind of very, very loose with the truth because on the Monday prior to the, when the baby was born, he tweeted out uh, what Megan and, and how we were going to call the baby and mentioned names. So if he didn't know who Megan Markle was, then, you know, that's a little bit of a blow the belt for me. So he's lying, and because he's lying, he's therefore racist, you say? Well, I think, it's, I think you know, if I lied on an insurance policy, I, I, get, I get done for that. I mean, he needs to face the law on it because he's just it's blatant lies. So the police should be involved? I think absolutely they should be involved, yeah, and I think you should take the rap for it, because it's just, it's completely the line. Barbara, hang on the line. Jack's in Twickenham. Jack, what do you make of Barbara? Well, I can't oh, anyway. No, 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 no. My, my wife is Indian. I'm, I'm white. Uh, so what would you think if you yeah. called my child yeah. a cheeky monkey and I brought you to the police station right. and reported yeah. you for a crime? How would you feel? I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't call your child a monkey. Yeah. I wouldn't call your monkey. I wouldn't tell them to call your child a monkey. But if, if you did, if someone did, do you think that's racist? Do you think that's racist? I'm not sure anybody else called anybody a monkey. A cheeky monkey is an expression, isn't it? Do you think that means they're racist? Well, I don't, you know, cheeky, you don't, you don't use that, that language. I personally wouldn't use that language. You're in this at me. I wouldn't personally call somebody a cheeky monkey. We're not so talking about me. We're not talking about racist. We're talking about a candidate who's going to break right. Oh, well, you have to, well, Barbara, you have to be able to prove that. We can't that. prove that at this stage. That might be, that might be, to, to, to Jack, that yeah. might be what the police are looking into, perhaps. Well, they were tweeted out. It's just on tweet what they actually said, what, what he was going to, what Megan and Harry were going to call the baby. So, so if everyone, if everyone was to be investigated by the, by the police for these things, well, no. we would have, we would have yeah. everyone at the police station practically, but the, the prisons would be full of people, so-called racists. I think TV has gone mad. The world is hypersensitive. We should just take a step back, look at people for who they are, and, and try and understand them instead of jumping on the bandwagon of hypersensitivity. We are stepping into a censorship society, a thought police society, and it's very, very dangerous. I'll give you another analogy. Um, do you believe in the theory of evolution? What do you want? What do you? I'm not talking about it. I'm, 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 I'm giving you an analogy. Well, no, I'm just talking about. Do, do, do you believe in? Do you believe in? Do you believe in the theory of evolution? No, I don't. You don't. Well, well, it, it, okay. So you, well, how would you? What do you believe in? What do you mean? What do I believe in? Do you believe in the theory of evolution? What I believe in. This is not about me. About Hello, Danny. How you doing, man? How you doing? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I am deeply offended by that. This is an analogy. I'm deeply offended by that. You just said. That I'm related to a monkey. I'd like you to come to the station right now, and I'd like to make, make a report for you being racist. Is that ridiculous or not? Yes or no? Yeah, it, feels ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. it feels ridiculous, Jack. It is. Case, 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 but if, case, if someone's getting called a, a cheeky monkey, that's not racist. That's saying I don't agree with your, your, your views. You cheeky monkey. That's not, that's not racist at all. How's that racist? Yeah, you, the game, but you don't get the police involved with every error that people make. He's made a mistake, isn't he? He's just made a mistake. Well, he's he's an idiotic, mistake. stupid, ridiculous, childish, pathetic, narcissistic error. But that's all it is. Well, but at the end of the day, I've not got the police involved. I don't know who's got the police involved. It's not me. It's not the gentleman I've just spoken to. Who do you think it was? I'd love, that would be amazing. Barbara, you put me on to something. I appreciate it. Jack, thank you to you as well. That would be amazing. If you made the call to the police to complain about Danny Baker's tweet, please give me a ring. 0345 6060 973. More of your calls to come. We'll talk about the land that was carried off by an eagle in Scotland in a minute. It's all happening. 1145. Coming up at 12 on LBC, Majid Noirs. Police are investigating Danny Baker's tweet about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex baby. Isn't this a monumental waste of police time? Noirs on LBC. Food freedom isn't just about knowing exactly what your favourite um, is. It's about pretending that tonight's the night Michael. you finally try something yeah, different on the menu. Um, maybe that one you made to Apparently. Too, and repeating to yourself that variety is the spice it, of life. Calling some uh, person who likes more than just one curry. Before I'll read that. At the last minute. 
and ordering the one you always get. Ah, oh, go on then. Because deep down you know exactly what your favourite curry is. Fire up the Deliveroo app and find your food freedom today. Deliveroo. Food freedom. Hey big man. It's your house speech. How is Prince of the Vikings getting me excited? Excited? Hang him up. I, uh, My favourites on four. GK. Underdogs fighting back in Monday to prove wrong. But nothing oh, grabs okay. me like Bedway's Monkeys to score. Just pick the first four players yeah. to score in the selected games every week. Call someone on your Finally, own my raw talent put to the test. It has a it's hunch video. time. Heed your hunch with it's Bedway's four to score. It's going to pay for a chance to win a hundred grand this week. The how is it based? The chances you're taking a yes, but to get more specific on the species means that you're literally trying to refer to someone it's as It's spring warmer days, lighter nights from bank holidays. Else. Your Volkswagen will Whereas if someone's a cheeky monkey, in perfect spring they're not a cheeky monkey, they're just cheeky. cheeky. Which is why we've devised a spring right. health check for complete reassurance. A marine tank town, an animal. For just how the pounds, the spring health check includes a free care kit with monkey, 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 Check 30. It's not Most nice. Your car gets I've given that, but it is not right. Check. Come on, Zona GQ. I'm not going to say the word. Everyone. Now, that is the way you can perform these at 31st. Go and tell them the GQ chink. That is right. Order in store. I'm going to tell them a money tank or a chicken lump. That's not right. It's a last. I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to ask you. So get a trade point. I'll go to trade point. I'm going to go to trade you're the N-word or Jinky or whatever. Yeah. As a parent, nothing strikes fear into your ankle worse than the stairs. If what can you do about the like that, why do people go a corner shop with this one by um, only weak guarantee a week in every room? So it's right. going for a billion Oh, it's going to the packing and shop. Now that's why it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but yeah. people, people don't go in the corner shop. I'm by the Pakistani family. Um. I sat at a packy shop. So, they can't pick and choose what's going to be racist and what's not going to be racist. That's why Spy Healthcare has a So, I think these people are silly. If they're going to get jump onto the bandwagon or over one to two little tweet saying, does he oh, interest refund? Sort of the fucking wrong attack. It's not wasted. It might be offensive, but it's not wasted. It'd be like, it'd be, uh, it'd be like someone calling a disabled person a spastic or a little child. Right? It's not offensive. It's not wasted. It's offensive. Me personally, I don't give a shit. To them call me a spastic or a little child. All the time, 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 They've been a lobbyist for a number of years, so I'm, I'm aware, or I was aware. Ian, how are you doing, my friend? How are you doing? And lobbyists have to put up with. Do you think there's something about Brexit that seems to have, in many ways, brought out the worst in people? Whatever we look back in history at Brexit, it is almost a cultish part of our history. People <laughs> Or wherever you get your podcasts. Not you're not home from. Tom Sedgwick on LBC. Patrick and Coulson, you're next on the radio about the Danny it's Baker tweet and the fact that the police are now involved. First, it's not if you go to my Twitter feed at Tom One, you can see the image that we're going to be discussing. The picture of the well, it's got to be called an unlikely sight, hasn't it? Of a lamb being carried off by an eagle in Scotland. I mean, the, this photographer captured the moment that the lamb was picked up in the talons of the it's eagle also, and it's literally flying like, away. Call, it, it happened on the yeah, Isle of so Mull. There is concern now that, from uh, uh, particular farmers and then that say, oh, these eagles that are set to be introduced into the Isle of Mull are going to well, destroy yeah. their, destroy not their all, lambs. Not, we all know uh, not all women are bitches. We know that some women are bitches. Association, Mr. Stocker, thank you for your time this morning. Look, look my ex girlfriend. How worried are you that these being cheaters which are being reintroduced? One individual, of my ex girlfriend, says you are in the house of kitchen knives. I think it's inevitable. We've been right? hearing for uh, many years that uh, some of the people who have been in the house of kitchen knives have been um, suffering and struggling in this way for many, many years. So it's inevitable I'm called, that I'm um, called these all birds thoughts. will take land. I'm not being racist to them. I'm being offensive. The main. Um, I think that we've got a problem in that uh, we're constantly being told that our biodiversity is under threat, uh, uh, the abundance of our species is uh, in decline. Only last week, 
the United Nations released its report that said that we were likely to lose a, a million species and uh, you know, the biodiversity is in a real mess, the planet is in a real mess. Why on earth would you release a, an apex predator that relies on that wildlife, that biodiversity for its food source? It's only going to lead to conflict. If it is going to be reintroduced to the Isle of Wight, are you going to make the case for farmers to have the ability to shoot it in the same way that you've now lost the ability for farmers to be able to shoot crows, which I understand is so attack land? Yeah, I think uh, you yeah, know the likelihood of getting uh, a, a, a allow, a, um, to being allowed to to shoot my tail sea eagles is uh, remote in the in, in the extreme. Really, I think that we need to go through a debate with the uh, the people that are behind this proposal about uh, diversionary techniques, uh, scaring techniques, and obviously compensation. Uh, compensation is a really difficult uh, topic though because. Uh, for a farmer to provide evidence that uh, a sea eagle has taken a lamb is going to be difficult. I mean, the lambs can be taken away. You know, in, uh, right, you find it, unless, you, unless you chase after the lamb and find it dropped somewhere or being eaten by the eagle, you, you're probably going to, or in a tree, you're going to struggle. Absolutely. I mean, and it's going to be in a sea eagle's nest somewhere, miles and miles away, and no one will have a clue where it's come from at that point. I mean, it's crazy to think the conversation is going to be easily calculated. How many animals, particularly sheep, in your experience as the National Sheep Association Chief Executive, have been killed or injured by birds? Caught by birds? I couldn't tell you how many, but it's a, it's, it would be a surprisingly high number by birds in general. And, it, you know, you and the public would be really shocked by some of the pictures that we see of um, the eyes taken out of the live ewes when they're laid down in a field lambing, you know, literally taken out. Uh, myself, I had a... Um, a lamb in the process of being born last spring, um, and before it came out of the ewe, a raven had pecked its tongue out, torn oh. its tongue out. And, oh. and of course, you know, once the tongue is gone, the, the lamb has got no hope at all of, of suckling. So there's only one thing you can do is, is to put the lamb down. Uh, lambs that are torn apart, uh, their stomachs are torn about, uh, apart by crows and ravens. Uh, it, it's it's incredibly widespread. I couldn't take that many, but it's not uncommon. That is just, some would say, nature red in tooth and claw. What right do you have as a farmer to try and intervene in that and kill the bird? Well, at the moment, uh, absolutely no, uh, no, no 